Hi, my name is Maria from lovebookfolding.com and this video is going to help you um, complete the book folding pattern uh, sewing machine. So uh, once you've bought the pattern you'll get um, a couple of files. One is the book folding pattern itself and the other is the instructions. So in the pattern what you'll get is the pattern so the coordinates the measurements for a 23 centimeter book height and you don't need to be really accurate with that 23 give or take a, uh, a uh, half a half a centimeter or so uh, there's also um, a pattern or the measurements for a book if you have around 20 centimeter mark those two are the most common sizes in novels so um, I've included both of those with this pattern and I'll try and do that with with uh, all the new patterns that uh, that I do there's also a PDF download to make the flowers that you see here okay so you'll get that also the end plates and some tags etc that you can make up to personalize your gift if it's going to be a gift and there's also a pdf here which is for this card here and also another tag okay so that comes along with the pattern as well and also the sheet for the end pages so basically those pdfs you just print off onto card color of your choice and um, then we'll, what we'll be doing I'll go through later on uh, later on in this video uh, of how to use those and what you can do with them okay so um, we start with the pattern then and I've been doing or I tend to use books of 23 centimeters in height um, so what we need is a book that has at least 464 pages Okay, so that's pages. The folds, obviously a fold will take up two pages, the front and the back of that page. So your fold numbers are always half the number of pages that you need. Okay, so I'm just going to go off and, and get a suitable book and we can uh, start creating the pattern. Okay, so we've got everything here to get started now so we have uh, the pattern and I've got a 23 centimeter book here and as you say um, as I say don't don't get too hung up on being exactly this is actually 23.2 um, so you know give or take nobody's going to notice it's just to to get the uh, image roughly in the center on um, on that plane there um, so and um, the number of pages um, has to be a minimum of 464 now actually this book isn't but I'm just using it for demonstration purposes um, it's a little bit less um, so but yours should have at least 464 uh, we have the instructions we have a pair of scissors we have a pencil. I like to use a propelling pencil. Uh, it's just uh, a lot easier. It keeps nice and sharp, obviously, so you don't have to keep sharpening the pencil. Uh, bone folder, that's optional because you can use your finger, uh, but I like to uh, use a bone, for you, uh, bone folder. Sorry. Um, if you're doing a lot of book folding, then uh, it can be quite wearing on, on your finger to use your finger all the time um, a ruler now an ordinary ruler is fine this one here um, I like to mention this one because I do get a lot of questions about it it is an ordinary perspex crafting ruler uh, which I attached right on the end there a little bit of plastic it's actually um, uh, one of those little labels that you stick in pots plant pots when you planting seedlings and things just cut off and then I've uh, screwed that on with tiny little screws uh, I did initially glue it on but as you can imagine it just kept falling off which was a bit annoying uh, so I screwed it on so that's that's what I used to use 
I now use one of these lovely rules. It's actually for woodworking. It's called an Incra rule. Um, and they come from America and they do uh, an inches version as well. This is the 30 centimeter T-bar version, basically. Like the bit of plastic on the end of the one that I did, it hooks on the edge like that. So it's easy to slide across this. This does exactly the same, okay, slides across. But the beauty of it is if you get a, a propelling pencil, mechanical pencil, whatever you like to call it, there's holes here at a quarter of a millimeter. You can go to the accuracy of quarter of a millimeter to this and you're not fiddling around. You're just putting the pencil in the correct hole and just pulling it along and you get a nice straight line. Um, that you can actually use and cut along. Okay, and I'll just bring that up to the camera so you can see. So it's really, really useful for book folding. Um, now I'm gonna use this to show that it can be used. These are quite expensive, particularly in the UK, uh, because of them being made in the US. But um, if you're in the US, you'll, you'll find them a, a much better much better value for money okay so we're going to proceed with this one uh, but again just you can just use an ordinary one uh, it just takes a little bit longer just to make sure that all your lines are nice and horizontal and straight etc okay so if we have a look at the instructions okay we need to find our starting page okay there's an example there where you can adjust it if you wish if you're, the height of your book's not 23 or 20 centimetres, okay. Um, to find your starting page, then you can go to um, my tutorial, which is Book Folding Basics, and you can um, follow the um, link that's at the top of the right-hand page at the moment. So you can follow that to, to go through the procedure um, on video tutorial if you wish. I've also got a very simple calculator starting page calculator on my website so if you go to www.bookfolding.com and on the menu there you'll see finding your starting page and if you click on there and you can you just enter all the details on there and it will give you the number of pages that you need to count to uh, to get your starting page okay so imagine we found our starting page just say this is my demonstration book okay so we'll just pick uh, a suitable page and we need to mark the measurements okay so make sure you've got the right pattern here for the right height so either 23 or 20 or one where you've made the adjustments if, if you want to do that then what you want to do is position your ruler on the front edge of the page okay so you're positioning your ruler and I need to move that up a bit so you can see it so I'll just do that move that out of the way as well okay okay so we're going to number three uh, position your ruler along the front edge of the page Measuring from the top of the page, mark all the measurements given on the pattern sheet for the fold number. Okay, so these are the fold numbers. So what we're doing is each line, each row is for one page or one fold number. So it's this side of the book that you're, fold, that you're marking. Okay, so as we've said before, a fold takes two pages this page and that page so then you're going to the next one okay uh, so actually if I move along because it looks like I've used that for something else in fact I'll tear it out so that it doesn't get in the way okay so we hook that over there now for the sewing machine the first 10 are no folds so we don't do anything to those and I'll show you later on that you can keep those or you can fold them back to the background and um, I'll, I'll show you what to do. So if we count those, so these are folds, so 
it's two pages front and back so it's one two three four five six seven eight nine ten okay so ten folds 20 pages okay I know it gets confusing at first if you're not used to book folding but after a while that becomes second nature I promise <laughs> so we're now on fold number 11 so position the ruler at the top and then we want to mark all the numbers that are on that row in this case it's just two nine eight five ten oh five so it's nine eight five and ten oh five like that okay and that's it and what i tend to do is mark the page number next to that so in this case it's page 19 so I write 19 against that and then I just follow those numbers down there so odd numbers so it'd be 9 and then we'll start again what oops lost my lead pressing too hard 1 3 5 7 9 1 3 5 7 9 and I just carry on down the page 1 3 5 7 9 1 3 5 7 9 one three five seven nine one three and then so 19 and that'll be 20 pencils playing up now two three so each of the ones four five six seven what that does is as i'm going along a folding if i get lost you know if i'm watching television or talking or, or whatever then i quickly double check that i'm on the right page for the right fold number but also if you do make a, a mistake it's much easier to come back and trace back where you are what fold relates to what page and it, it just allows you to uh, to keep track nicely okay so the next one and I think you find in what I find is that I automatically subconsciously just check 21 21 before I do it also cross that one off so 9 7 so 9 7 10 20 10 20 I'm only doing this roughly because I can't get in position with the camera as well so don't worry if it's a bit off but when when you're doing it properly um, you'll be able to do those measurements accurate, accurately okay so you just carry on for each fold and I'm just going to jump forward just to make sure um, you know that say for page 73 uh, on this one fold number 38 you would mark all of those measurements okay for along that page edge okay so all of them so you'd go six five 13 7 14 05 18 20 and 20 okay so every row all of those measurements need to be marked down for that fold okay so those are the making the measurements okay point four the top marks now this can vary you can experiment as you get more confident you can experiment with this um, but basically on this pattern we've just got two positions to mark and this card actually isn't for this particular pattern but it doesn't matter what you're doing is you're marking along basically what I do you can use a little ruler but what I do is use a piece of card just a scrap piece of card fold the end over and then from there I measure where I want those top marks to be and I draw a line on the card like though this was for three like that and then when you're marking off you're not measuring or anything you're just marking those one two for the sewing machine there's just two like that and you do that on every page okay one two right the way through okay and for the sewing machine uh, I use six centimeters for the background so if we get it here 
so this was six centimeters from this front edge across there for the background and then four centimeters for the sewing machine so this here that gap there to the sewing machine was six uh, sorry four centimeters so those those are the two measurements for, for this particular pattern now what that means is that when you're marking you're doubling those numbers because basically what you're doing is say for instance uh, four and six so that needs to be at eight centimeters and 12 centimeters so we're doubling those up because you're it's much easier to bring that page up to a mark than actually f try and measure to fold this uh, to that mark so if we fold up to eight then that means that that gap there is four and then we fold up to 12 that gap there is then six okay so make your card or use a ruler and mark along the top on every page that you're going to be using uh, along the top okay so that's point four point five the vertical folds as i've just shown you there what you're doing is you're folding one two on each page yeah so fold up to the 12 mark to make the six open up again fold up to the eight to make the four okay so then we're ready to cut okay so then we're point number six and point six number six what we're doing and i'll go to one of the ones that we've marked jumping about a few bits so I'm just showing you here we go so fold number 11 on the pattern was 985 okay here 985 and 1005 so we will have already marked this at 8 12 so we fold up to the six this is where you bow fold and what i tend to do is just flatten a bit and then do that and then that tends to keep it a bit straighter okay and then what we do to cut we just position the scissors and cut well i'll use the text to keep it nice and horizontal up to that second fold and there we go okay so that's cutting the marks number six okay so folding back uh, number seven when you cut basically what you're creating are like tabs and these are these are the tabs that i refer to in the instructions so what you're doing is you're folding these tabs back and you're folding them alternately you start off by folding back to six centimeters from the, this outside edge then the next tab in this case is quite a small one and this one we're folding back to four centimeters and then next one six so you're alternating between six four six okay so in this instance in this pattern the top and the bottom will always be the same folding back to six so that's just a, a quick check a quick reference but as you go through the pattern that will become clear so again on, on fold number 12 fold back to six four six fold back okay now this is where i just fast forwarded to uh, fold number 38 and I just wanted to demonstrate this because obviously we've cut, we've marked and cut all the measurements on that fold number. So again, start at six, next one's at four, next one's at six, next one's at four, next one's at six, 
Mm. This one's at four. Now, that just shows you that something's not quite right here. <laughs> because this one should go back to six as well. So, six, four, six, four. I think I must have missed a measurement. And this is a good indication, really, of where you can go wrong and how easy it is to correct. So we're on page 23, um, where I wrote down the marks. Page 20, sorry, uh, yeah, this, sorry. This won't actually coincide because I jumped forward. So fold number 38 is 650. 1370, 1405, 148. There we go. I missed the 14.8 here. So that's a good way of double checking. Just make sure that the top and the bottom both go back to that six. Okay, so I'll just add that cut in and all should be well. Okay, so six, four, Six, four, six, four, six. There we go. Okay. And then we just go through the whole of the pattern, marking off, and then folding back, cutting, and then folding back the tabs for, for each of the rows. Uh, once you've done that, you'll end up with and put that down there something that looks like this one okay now you can do a single fold method which is the normal standard method for cut and fold and I'll just show you how that one looks okay okay so I just want to do show you the results when you just use the single fold which is the standard fold uh, people use to do cut and fold so that would be the result so it's exactly the same measurements uh, for the pattern exactly the same pattern but you're just folding once and I'll, I'll show you in a little bit more detail once I get the double fold and um, just to sort of compare them next to each other just to give you an indication Okay, so basically uh, what you're doing for this one is just folding once. So if I get my practice book. Okay, so you would do everything the same. Okay, same measurements that you would mark down here. Um, for example, those two, I'm um, just giving this as an example okay and then um, now s a point is some people uh, say well just fold back to where the text starts um, now two problems with this obviously as you can see with this one it is very very narrow but also as you go through the book it does vary because it's not a precise method of binding a book and this could be in and out so that's why you might get a little bit of um, uh, where you're folding it won't be consistent so it will be fairly hickety pickety uh, is one way of putting it okay so I would still do a measurement uh, it doesn't matter what measurement it is but decide on the measurement and again do the measurement so that you're folding to it so fold to that mark get your bone folder fold along there yeah and then cut cut your measurements and then you're just folding back and again you fold this bit you wouldn't fold that bit and then you'd fold that and that's all you do so you wouldn't be folding twice so it's a single fold method again you just do that for each of the folds okay so that's that's one method you can do same pattern as I say just different method uh, giving 
a different look. So another variation you can have is rather than have the background here at six centimeters and the sewing machine at four centimeters, you can reverse that so the sewing machine um, is inverted. So this becomes four centimeters, and this becomes six centimeters. So all you need to do is just reverse. So in it, the, your first. And I'll just show you here um, on the practice book. If we go back to that first fold here. This so this is fold number eleven, where we we were doing six four six. You would now do four six four. Okay. So just redo those. So be four six four and um, right the way through okay so you're just reversing those two measurements and where I um, jumped forward to fold number 38 again it's the same all the way through so it would be four six four six four six four so again the top and the bottom are going to be at four and then so if you keep to that so you'll you'll be able to tell if you get it wrong like I did earlier okay so if I um, what I'll do is refold um, in fact I did this earlier I refolded this one and then folded it back so um, uh, the next clips will show you uh, how it will look with this folded at four um, for the background and then six for the sewing machine so it becomes inverted okay so i've now finished refolding those um, tabs so you can see the the different effect that you get uh, by just reversing the folds uh, so instead of folding the background to six you're folding the background to four centimeters from this outside edge and then the sew machine is to six centimeters from the outside edge rather than the, the four. So it's just reversing those two and um, that's the effect that you get. So as I said earlier, the pattern comes with um, various PDF downloads that you can print off on to color card. So the, there's no color at all on it. Uh, so you can choose whatever color you wish. So if we go to the one that I did when I did the book. Um, so basically, as you see, cut round the line here, and then this tab here. Okay, so if I, I printed one off earlier on onto yellow, so you could see. So we're going to cut it out of round the outer solid line, okay, and the inside of it as well. You might need a craft knife for that. And also this strip here okay so if we do that So now we've cut those two bits out, what we need to do is just cut along there and there, A and B, and then A and B on 
the stand as well. Okay, so just pull the way up just to where the line ends, like so, and then again on the sewing machine, on the base of the sewing machine. Okay, and then what you do then is then that slips in that one A to A and then B to B. That slips in there, a bit fiddly initially, but there we go. Okay, so those two slip into there, which then allows it to stand up. Okay, so what you can see from this one here is that I've printed the same piece, uh, same PDF, this PDF, I've printed it out twice on two different coloured cards and then just cut out different aspects, different aspects of the card and stuck it, stuck one on top of the other and that just sort of colour coordinates it as well okay and then if I get it close enough here you can see there's little sparklies little diamantes around there and also along here as well and some little white it's just to highlight it well as, as well uh, and that just brings it alive a little bit okay now on the tag here okay and again use the two printed colors and cut the bit that's supposed to be the yarn out and then you can put a tie bit on the end for the tag and then obviously write your little message on the back there and this bit here okay that I've used here again that's just cutting out different aspects and then popping a, a little button in the middle so you can decorate it and um, do different colors as you wish uh, so that you can make it nice and personal to whoever you're giving it to and along here that's left blank for you to write a little message or the person's name etc okay so um, there's also the end pages and other tags etc um, that we can have a, a quick look at as well so another of the pdf downloads that you get with the pattern is this sheet which has end plates and tags on um, and just circles uh, and various aspects and just to give you an idea of what you can do with this sheet uh, I've just got together some of the ones that I've done before so the end plate okay and I'll just bring that up so again so print it off on two different colored cards and then you can sort of work with that and, and build it up and this one I've put a couple of little um, sparkly bits on the bottom of the hearts here and uh, it says uh, this book belongs to and you can write the person's name etc and you can put that on the inside of the book or you can put it in an envelope obviously for, for them it just personalizes the gift if you're giving it a, as a gift also these tags um, this one instead of the uh, sewing machine here was was hearts so you can see that that was used in different ways as well uh, that one um, there's this one here which is the same and um, just cut the circle out etc and put a little bit of green card on it as well okay and another version was this one so it just gives you an idea another one of the hearts there of um, how versatile it is and what you can do build that one up that one's just a plain one with a bit of colored tape and then buttons stuck on top and this one here with some paw prints on and then 
doggy bone, etc., etc. So it just gives you an idea, um, really, of, of uh, what you can do with this sheet. It's it's there to be played with and and for you to to put your creativity or your creative mind to. In the case of that's that one, we also do an end page, and I'll I'll show you how I use that next. Mm. So this is the PDF for the end pages and um, normally I, I do one that sort of uh, ties in with the subject um, of the pattern. So this one obviously the sewing machine so we've got reels of, uh, of thread that they come round into our heart. So what you need to do with these um, basically is to cut them into a size uh, that will fit either side so we're going to attach it to the inside front and back cover of the book for this one uh, we don't need to um, print out two but depending on the depth of or, or width of, of where you need to be sticking it you might need to print off two but for this one I just uh, printed it off onto green card okay and then cut it in half lengthways and then just trimmed it to the right size. So I just sort of offered it up, put a little pencil mark and then trimmed it off for, for the right height. Then to put it in, I, what I tend to use is, is one of these, um, which are quite good, uh, which sort of rolls on the sticky tape. Because if um, you can use some water-based glues, but they tend to bubble up a little bit, uh, or a, a glue stick, glue stick, or, or the likes, they can they can be okay. Um, but these I, I find sometimes bubble up as well, so um, I found these are these are quite good for the purpose. So we just I just tend to just do it along three sides or three edges. And we just run it down. I just move that up again for you. Run it down those edges. These can be a bit temperamental at times, but basically just do it along that edge like so. And then open up the book to the edge. Okay, and you just need to make sure oh, uh, that way round. You just need to make sure that it's covering that white page or whatever colour is on your book. Okay, so I'll open that up a little bit. So just lining that up and then just pressing that down like that. And then the same on the other side. Spin the book round and make sure we do it on the right side so it's this side, this side, and this side. Okay, don't have to be too fussy about that. Open those pages up and again line it up nice and straight like so. I can come down a little bit and there we have it. Okay so that's your inside front and back pages there and I think it just helps to sort of throw uh, the picture forward uh, or throw the image forward and uh, it looks quite good. Okay, uh, now the next I'll have a look at the flowers. We can uh, look at the flowers and um, see what we can do with those. Now the flowers is something new I've been adding to the patterns. So to make up the flowers I've done a separate video tutorial so um, you can go to those from whichever pattern um, but I'll just show you what I did with them, how I used the flowers to, to decorate this one. Okay, but um, there's a link up um, up in the corner there. Um, actually, that side. No, that side. 
I get confused because I'm doing this back to front. <laughs> okay, so there should be a link up um, top right hand corner um, for the tutorial for the flowers, making up the flower template. Okay. Okay, so here we have the sewing machine all completed and you can see what I've done here with the flowers that we talked about and as you can see I've used the same colours as we've used for the um, sewing machine card okay so it just all ties in nicely and obviously the the end pages as well and so I've done three flowers and this one here was just on pink card and then I cut out um, took a couple of the same in um, the uh, book print and then popped a button in the middle and as you as you layer the flowers you just put a bit of glue in the center to, to stick them together okay and then these two the green and the pink ones are just single single flowers and then this one I just put a uh, polystyrene bead in the center and again another button in the center of that one you can position these um, and then this cotton reel uh, that comes on one of the PDFs as well and, and sits on the cotton reel on top of the pattern and I've wrapped some thread around that in a similar colour green and then around here I've done a little motif there as well just to balance it out a little bit. Uh, when you use the flowers in this manner what you can do is just get a scrap of card just put that down there uh, just a strip of card and then put a double glue in the middle and then stick it in the center of the back of the card and then leave it to dry and then once it's dry just bend them over and then you can just slip that into place in between the pages uh, I haven't glued them in here but obviously you can glue them into place if, if you wish to just to hold them as you wish okay so that's uh, all decorated uh, all complete uh, just give you uh, some ideas on on how to finish off right last thing to show you is the variation of um, choices you have with with these spare pages at either side of the sewing machine now if you remember on the pattern the first and last folds are basically no folds so we just leave the page flat and that just gives a, a bit of a background to the sewing machine and if you like more text showing either side you like the sort of min minimalist look uh, as it is there then um, that that's the way to do it however what I tend to do is fold them back to the background uh, which in this instance is is six centimeters and what it does it, it just throws throws it forward more and just gives it um, you know the space either, either side of the sewing machine as well but also any spare pages that you've got either side to fold those back as well so so not only the the ten of these either um, at the, at the front and the back but also the spare pages that you've got so um, if I do that and then you can see the difference Okay, so now you can see the difference and obviously it gives you the opportunity of putting the two um, end pages in as well and like I say I think it sort of frames uh, the sewing machine quite nicely to fold those back. Okay, so that's the end of the tutorial for the sewing machine and if you have any questions at all you can contact me and the contact details are, are coming up in just a moment and thank you very much for watching and see you again soon. Thank you then, bye.